Saint of the day is Saint Erasmus, also known as Saint Elmo, and no, not the tickle me type. Saint Erasmus was Bishop of Formia in Italy during the persecution against Christians under emperors Diocletian and Maximin Hercules. He left his diocese and went to Mount Libanus, where he hid for seven years. However, an angel is said to have appeared to him and counseled him to return to his city. You'll see, he has a great relationship with his angel. On the way, he encountered some soldiers who questioned him. Erasmus admitted that he was in fact a Christian, and they brought him to trial at Antioch before the emperor Diocletian. After suffering terrible tortures, he was bound with chains and thrown into prison. But an angel of the Lord appeared and helped him escape. He passed through Lycia, where he raised up the son of an illustrious citizen. And this resulted in a number of baptisms, which drew the attention of the Western Roman Emperor, Maximin, who was much worse than was Diocletian. Maximin ordered his arrest, and Erasmus continued to confess his faith. They forced him to go to the temple of the idol, but along Erasmus's route, all the idols fell and were destroyed. And from the temple there came fire, which fell upon many of the pagans. These actions angered the emperor who had Erasmus enclosed in a barrel full of protruding spikes and rolled down a hill. Yikes, that sounds, like, that sounds very painful. But the angel of the Lord healed him from these wounds. When he was recaptured, he was brought before the emperor and beaten and whipped and coated with pitch and set alight as the Christians had been in the Nero's games. And still, he survived. He was thrown into prison with the intention of letting him die of starvation. But then Erasmus managed to escape. He was recaptured and tortured in the Roman province of Elicrium after boldly preaching and converting numerous pagans to Christianity. Finally, according to this version of his death, his abdomen was split open and his intestines wound around a windlass. Erasmus may have become the patron of sailors because he is said to have continued preaching even after a thunderbolt struck the ground beside him. This prompted the sailors who were in danger from sudden storms and lightning to claim his prayers. The electric discharges at the mastheads of ships were read as a sign of his protection and came to be called St. Elmo's Fire. He died in 303 AD. St. Erasmus, or St. Elmo, pray for us. Wow. Praise be to God in all things. The gospel today comes to us from John chapter 17, verses 20 through 26. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me and that you love them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. McEvely, uh, Mac Evely, actually, writing in about the year 1902, said, quote, He asks for all, for the entire church, the same blessing of unity that he had already asked for the apostles, back in verse 11. Here he prays only for the faithful. Elsewhere, as on the cross, he prays for his enemies and unbelievers. All one, united in the bonds of faith, hope, charity, concord, and subordination in a manner similar, though unequal, to the essential union of the divine nature. The union of will and love which exists in us as thou, Father, in me, and that this perfect union may be forwarded 
and accomplished by the union with us in sanctifying grace and supernatural love of charity, which makes us, as it were, partakers of the divine nature. Close quote. Machiavelli, pray for us. What did you find, Adrian? Yes, Cornelius Halapide here on verse 25 says, O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. Why does he call the Father righteous? Well, St. Augustine says, because he justly deprived the world and the ungodly of the knowledge of himself. For it is his justice that the truth of God is not revealed to some by reason of their sins, but it is his mercy that it manifested to others. This is something that I think about quite often, actually. It makes me look back on the scripture passage, you know, that blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Are we pure of heart? Are we going to confession? Are we trying to remain in a state of grace? Are we fighting against our concupiscence? Or do we not have a firm purpose of amendment? Do we reject the graces that are given to us at confession? Because if we reject those graces, well, we are squandering the great grace that is conversion, that is repentance, that is salvation, that is, most importantly, knowledge of God. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God, makes me think often upon the fact that when we go to confession, when we confess our impurities, our sins, our wickedness, our maculas, our stains, when we confess them, are we doing so out of a fear of hell? Well, that's sufficient. But even more so, in being pure of heart and being free from mortal sin and being in a state of sanctifying grace gives us the opportunity to know, love, and serve God in a more perfect way. Because we cannot know God in a true way, because just like Augustine is saying here, God deprives the knowledge of himself to the ungodly. So we have to be godly if we want to know God. That is very important for us to know, for us to keep in mind, for us to meditate upon today. St. Cyril says he thinks that he is called because he condemned the devil and deprived him of power wherewith he held the world captive and kept him from attaining that immortality for which he was created. The meaning is, O righteous father, the world hath not known this thy justice, which thou didst exercise upon the devil for the world's sake. For had it known it, all would have flocked to thee. This is important to think about because our Lord desires to give us the graces that we that he has set for us which for us it is the immortality same as the angels it would be immortality of life in heaven but if we reject god just like satan did with the sin of pride with that gravest of sins with that sin that cometh before the fall that sin of pride that is in every single one of our hearts if we are like the devil then we will be treated like the devil we will be revoked of all those graces and we will not see the beatific vision. Let's think about this today. Let us run to the confessional. Let us become pure of heart so that way we may see God and know God in a more perfect and beautiful way.